the trades on the day for Friday, September the 8th, 2023. We are pausing our trading right now. The market is just extremely a difficult market environment to trade. It is price action that's just predatory, untrustworthy, stop running, not worthy of our liquidity. So we are going to stop and celebrate our quarterly equity peak. We're up on the quarter. So that's one thing, one positive to take from this. But this just brutal uh, last two weeks have just been extreme. Uh, pretty much every day, all day, the market just turns against all of our positions as soon as we take them. And it, the only energy it seems to have is when we take a net position, it takes energy in the opposite direction. So we're up on the air, up on the quarter, brutal month, brutal week. Um, just continuously down since our last equity peak on August the 24th. And so, um, you know, these drawdowns happen. We're can, looking at the market uh, change, potentially a regime change back to 2017, 2019 levels. There's just a lot of trend fighting. Very, very narrow VIX and ranges. Let's look at the portfolio calculator. But first, the trades on the day. Um, we're just going to look at the money management algorithm indicator. Uh, 3152 minus 3152.50 on the stock index portfolio. 32. We're also trading. We added the zigzag to the mix, and so um, this was down further, about 4,000. So we talked about stopping it being down four, anywhere from four to five k today. Uh, we added zigzag. Uh, in an effort to take advantage of this chop. So you can see zigzag is down today, 1600. Our soybean strategy is down 350. Crude oil hasn't traded. Just, uh, pretty much every trade is going against us. And so you can see the current net position is long 3 S&P, long one NASDAQ. The market could rebound. Uh, the, the strategies could rebound and the market could present some favorable price action. But this has been uh, more extreme and it's not just this current drawdown, we've managed to uh, be profitable the last few months, but um, and on the quarter, we're up net, but the results are um, extremely narrow. You can see that in the portfolio calculator. This is ad updated as of Wednesday. It doesn't include yesterday or today. And so um, minus 15, 132.50 as of Wednesday, and then add today's results to it, taking back the gains of August. And July, we started on a drawdown, so we were ahead for July. And so on the quarter, um, this would be down on the hypotheticals. The hypotheticals are actually down on the quarter. But since we started in a drawdown and we didn't trade on CPI, we did have some other technical errors along the way. We're up on the quarter. And so really, amidst this really tough uh, environment that we're in, we're able to establish gains on a quarter where we wouldn't normally be able to establish those because of the market environment. So we're not going to fight with the market. Um, it's just, you know, we just have to manage our risk as we go. See, June was a good month, hypothetically. And then May um, is also very narrow. So, you know, May, July, August, September, um, four out of the last five months have just been kind of... Um, Going back towards 2019, if you look at 2019, it was a plus 79k year, but just you see these smaller numbers because volatility and ranges were low. This is pre-pandemic. And then 2017 was a plus 9k. That that was the year, I think, when the VIX was down at 7. It's the lowest levels ever. And right now it's at you know 13 today. And so they're trying to crush it. Um, and so it's just uh, looking at a regime change. So we have to trade differently and have some ideas I'll share with you at the end of this video um, next. But I wanted to go over where we are while we're pausing. We're not pausing just because of this drawdown, really. Um, we're pausing because considering a regime change in the market to much lower volatility levels, which doesn't make sense. <clears throat> This doesn't make sense to me. Um, fundamentally, we should have higher volatility. The market should be going, you know, the market should be much lower, in my opinion, based on bond prices. The correlation between stocks and bonds has been stock, you know, <clears throat> had to clear my throat. Um, you know, stocks were up, bonds were up, and now bonds 
are down and stocks are still up. And so there's that big difference there, that spread difference. Bonds down means higher interest rates. And so here's the Fed balance sheet. And you can see what happened during the pandemic. And you see, um, you know, it had gone up in recent years since the financial crisis. And it's doubled. It was at $4 billion. And it went up to $9 billion in it, and they've reduced it, but not, not really that much. Um, it's, it's still above $8 billion. $8 billion. So in my opinion, I, this, I believe this is one of the reasons the excess liquidity is one of the reasons why stocks still remain higher um, amidst higher interest rates and should, should be lower. And, and if, if we didn't have a Federal Reserve, we didn't have a Fed a balance sheet, um, someone doing QE, printing money, um, I think stocks would be freely, more freely traded and prices would be much lower. I mean, you can see it in the nature of the market and you can see, um, you know, the market is, it sells off and then it thinks it's supposed to rally back because of the excess liquidity. It's always, it's always getting propped up and it, and it should be, uh, there should be some more distribution in this market from time to time. You know, overall, it's great to have a U.S. stock market that goes up, but, you know, it should go up, you know, it ebbs and flows like this. Longer term, prices will be higher rather than this desire to create a straight line equity curve that goes higher and goes up every day, uh, trading differently than normal. And so we've just had a long period, long season of the market trading that way, and it's still uh, kind of built in. Pavlovic response is still built in and the excess liquidity supports this uh, unnatural price action and we've been we've been part of uh, joining into that and enjoying those moves um, right now they um, the sellers are matching the buyers uh, in a tight range and so I do better in my research when I can pause my live trading from day to day live trading the stress of that. And so I will find a better setup and we'll work with the current regime change. I have some other ideas as well and I want to show you that. When the markets get very narrow in their daily ranges, you have to consider um, either finding a really good counter trend strategy, which is hard to do, or uh, when VIXs are low and ranges are low, you have to maybe consider swing trading or even using options to swing trade. And so here is an example of a strategy um, and the S&P, here is what it looks like in the equity curve. You'll notice this goes back 22 years and really did really well until 2009. What happened in 2009? QE. Um, QE came in, um, lower interest rates, financial crisis. And it's kind of, there's been some times where it's gone up and it's gone back down. And it's gone up and it's gone back down. It started working again when? In, in mid 2022 um, when we're coming out of QE interest rates are going up again and so when we're in a non QE uh, when, we're, when we're more of a tightening period this strategy on a daily chart swing trade tends to do really well and so looking at potentially trading this with options because this does not have a stop loss here is here are the results 205,000 uh, Fifty-three thousand dollar drawdown, ninety-one sixty-seven average trade profit, um, no stop loss. Biggest losing trade is sixteen thousand, um, and here is what it's done in the last twelve months: sixty-five k, and twenty twenty did forty-eight k, twenty twenty-two did thirty-five k, thirty-one k in twenty sixteen, and then forty-four k in two thousand eight, and so good years when when we're not in a easing period of interest rates. And then, um, then they're, when we're tightening, the, the results are better. So this is one thing to consider is options trading, swing trading and using options to do that to limit your overnight risk. If you don't like to hold outright futures positions, this is something that could be considered. Hardly any drawdown since, matter of fact, let's go back to, June, to um, the beginning of this and see what the worst case drawdown is in July. 15th 2022 so here it is it's July 2022 13k drawdown on a closed trade basis and um, $709 average trade profit 
and it takes long and short trades. 56 on the long side, 29 on the short side. Lower drawdown on the short side, surprisingly, and here is the equity curve. So one of the things that we may also uh, see start to work well again are the SR counter trends in all markets. So here's the SR counter trend, 100K portfolio on my pay on my portfolio page. And so a lot of these markets have been difficult to trade since the pandemic. Uh, extra volatility now that we have more normal interest rates and we're seeing, um, you know, lower volatility, lower ranges, 2017, 2018, 2019. These kind of strategies may start working again. That's why I've looked at adding soybeans and grains. And then you see it's also in a drawdown. So it's possible that this SR counter trend set up for the other markets may work. You know, if the NASDAQ were, we had a lot of strategies that did really well, you know, in the NASDAQ environment where, you know, it pops 300 points or pops 200 points or pops four or 500 points. Um, and having these quick moves, those were nice. But if we just get these, you know, 50 point ranges, um, you know, yesterday we had about a 50 point range for several hours. And then at today's open, we get, you know, 70 points in the first few minutes. And so in three minutes, it's trading more range than you do in three hours. So you just get this ramped up move. Um, and then it gets, and then it just slams the open and it rallies and it slams that. And so um, different market, you know, it's always going to be, we're always going to see markets like this. Um, we're not always going to see markets like this, though. Um, the percentage of time we see markets uh, that move like this will change. The percentage of time we see markets that move like this change right now, this is pretty high. High percentage of time is markets that just chop. And very low percentage of time that markets actually have really sharp moves that are easy to exploit and have huge gains. So I'm pretty disappointed to have to stop trading here. And I'm pretty disappointed in this market environment. Like I said, the quarter has just uh, grinded against us. We've been fortunate to make good decisions and when to start and stop to be profitable on the quarter in spite of the challenging market environment that we're experiencing and so this is where we are and I will be doing research and I will update the portfolio calculator so you'll have the final results and these are the trades on the day and on the week for September the 8th 2023 I will not be posting live videos every day while I do hey David Bean here welcome to Capstone Trading Systems YouTube page be sure to subscribe to join our community of algorithmic traders we are real money traders. We share our winning streaks, we share our losing streaks, as well as market updates, strategies, and coding tips.